Welcome to Lunchbox Sessions, bite-sized industrial training. Hello, this is Carl from lunchboxsessions.com. In this video on troubleshooting the pilot-operated pressure-reducing valve, let's have a close look at the pilot section drain. Some users come to believe that the pilot section drain is only there to take a small amount of internal leakage flow back to tank. Well, that's kind of understating matters. While technically true that there is an internal leakage flow, it's a very critical flow. The fluid passing on the pilot drain back to tank is what keeps the pilot section of this valve functional. What do you believe will happen if the pilot drain flow is blocked? Let's find out. No one would put a pilot drain shutoff valve in place in a typical hydraulic system, but for our learning model, it helps us understand clearly what takes place. But before I close the pilot drain valve, let's have a look at the main control spool in the pressure reducing valve main body. Dropping down to the bottom here, notice the amount of piston surface area on the bottom of the spool. Now let's pass through the balance orifice and notice that there is some surface area inside at the bottom. And then let's move all the way to the top and notice that there's some piston surface area on the top of the spool as well. Is that all of the piston surface areas we need be concerned with? No, there is an additional amount of surface area right here on an annular part of the main spool. So look at which pressures are acting on these surface areas and ask yourself, what happens to the pressure in the system, in the pilot system specifically, meaning the pressures after we've passed through the balance orifice, what happens to those pilot system pressures once flow becomes blocked when we close off the pilot drain valve? And again, pilot drain valve just simulating what could happen on a small diameter line if flow was blocked for any reason, hose being kinked or any other issue that might block that flow. Are you ready? Let's close the pilot drain valve and try to make your best guess what will happen to pressure on the downstream side or what will that main spool do when pilot flow is blocked. Did you guess correctly? Did you realize that the valve would move to full open position and that all of our inlet pressure would suddenly become present on our outlet line? That is exactly what happens. Because if we look at the surface areas that are inside the valve, not only is there a spring, a fairly light spring, but a spring providing a bias all the same. When flow is blocked at the pilot drain valve, then all of a sudden we find out that Pascal's law takes over, meaning that a fluid that is under pressure and trapped has nowhere else to go. That pressure will equalize in all places throughout that valve and acting on the surface area on top of the spool and acting on the surface area on the inside down low and on the annular on the outside, that together with the force of the bias spring is enough surface areas to make sure that the valve will move to its fully open position and hence our inlet pressure is now present on our outlet even though our original setting is still set at 649 psi where the spring value is concerned we've lost our ability to create that low downstream pressure and quite often in error, the assumption is made that the main spool is merely stuck open due to a contamination issue wedged into the valve. That is, of course, possible. But before you go to that trouble, you want to test and find out whether or not there is any issue with the pilot drain flow returning to tank. That's a much simpler issue to solve for before the valve is replaced or opened for repair. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We have hundreds of interactive resources like this live schematic, so you can try out your wild ideas without blowing anything up. Get started at lunchboxsessions.com.